So this is a very interesting unboxing. I'm used to opening up and reviewing a lot of tech, but never actually hearing the story behind it from the people who actually made it. This is part unboxing, part interview. Well, Justine, what are you unboxing? It's right behind me. What's in this box is the RMT, which stands for Reality Modeling Tool from ASUS, Republic of Gamers. Now this is an all new reimagined laptop collaboration with Errolson Hugh, co-founder of Acronym and designer David Rudnick. I got a chance to chat with both of them and after hearing the passion and thoughtfulness that went into their design choices with this laptop, it is definitely something that should not be overlooked. Let me have Errolson and David introduce themselves to you guys and then I'll start opening this thing up. For anybody who's not familiar with acronym or like what both of you guys kind of do and how you kind of came about this whole project. I'm sure there's a lot of confused people looking at the public of gamers uh, Instagram feed right now. <laughs> like, who are these people? What is going on? My name is Errol Sinhu and I'm the, I'm the principal designer and one of the co-founders of a, a brand called Acronym. And Acronym has been around for almost almost 20 years. Oh, wow. Uh, I guess you'd call it an underground brand. It's not something everybody knows. And our whole thing has been to approach apparel, not from a purely from a fashion or aesthetic sense, but as if they are, um, in a sense, tools. How did you and David meet? So how long have you guys been working together? Uh, David and I have met on Twitter, actually. Oh my enough. gosh, that's incredible. That's how I meet all of my friends now. <laughs> I got into graphic design as someone who, studying art history in college, loved music. Errolson literally happened to be fans of a lot of the music that I listened to and love as well. And so he kind of got to know a bit of, of, of my design and we kind, of, we kind of met through that. I've always been a little bit of an outsider to the design world. I think because like coming in, I was self-taught and I had some skepticism about certain kinds of industrial process, Errolson has been a huge inspiration to me and someone who I'm incredibly grateful to have met and to have a chance to see uh, the way that Errolson works. It greatly resonates with the way that I feel that naturally I want to approach design as well, which is to solve problems from the ground up. Something that David touched on was the unboxing experience of this laptop and how much thought actually goes in to the process of packaging. One thing we've definitely tried to do, I think hopefully this will be a fun unboxing. It's not designed to be an extravagant unboxing or uh, something which is there to craft or to affirm preconceived expectations of what a luxury uh, hardware experience might be or a conventional high-end gaming experience might be. Okay, here it is guys. The unboxing is happening right the second. Boxes upon boxes. Here is the power cable. So it's got this nice bubble packaging around it to protect it. I love they have their little logo. It's also etched on the power adapter. This is nice. I'm gonna reuse this to ship out some things. This is so sharp. After talking to these guys, I feel like everything means something, even if we don't know what it is yet. Clue. Oh, look at this. This is like a little USB stick, but also fashion. Make it USB, but make it fashion. That's what I've been saying forever. A note. What is this? What is this? What is this? Oh, is this a, is this a puzzle? This seems to be a puzzle. I'm wondering if when we put this in, this will make sense. What does it mean? We're about to find out, or maybe we won't. Also has the really cool bubble packaging. Feels so protective. It also feels so comfy. Like, this feels like a camping pillow. <gasps> I'm really tired. I haven't slept in you know, like four weeks, maybe. So here's all of the packaging. It's cool because they do have their reality modeling tool logo right here. And I was like, what 
does this mean? Probably would have normally just looked at this and be like, that's a cool logo. Now I know what this actually means. And now you do too. The framing of the device, this, this phrase that we use, the reality modeling tool, uh, this strange phrase, we call it RMT01. You know, this just basically speaks to the fundamental philosophy behind what we've been talking about, this, this kind of emotional design language that we've been trying to kind of approach the machine with, really thinking about the viewer, what it means to use a laptop. The key aspect of the relationship we really wanted to emphasize is as a creator, as a gamer, your hardware, it gives you uh, the possibility to create worlds of your own. You will have seen this on the promotional mm -hmm. materials. Uh, that's what we call the RMT Cascade logo. And it's the logo of the reality modeling tool, but it's very simple. There are these two planes here two kind of vertical lines and there's this transfer between them and you could view one of them as the laptop screen and one of them as the viewer and they both pass information back and forth and that's just like that very simple logo the cascade is kind of just the visual representation of some of the philosophy behind this project it's this screen that kind of goes two ways the abyss case is also into you but in a nice way <laughs> More secrets in here. I feel like this is just a machine full of secrets. I will leave no corner of this unturned. I don't trust you guys. Okay. Clear. This will be the first time that I don't throw this on the ground because I also feel like there's probably some secrets in here too. Oh, there's a secret, my serial number. I'll save this. I gotta be fair, I gotta be careful. It's a liability. <laughs> and here it is, the actual laptop itself. Look at this, they put like a little Velcro here so you can open it up. <sighs> oh boy, look at this, look how cool. I love all these little perforations and since I did kind of get a little preview of it, I now know that part of this is made up of LED lights and it looks really cool. Uh, that came from the Asus uh, Republican Gamers mm -hmm. Design Lab. They came up with this new you know, idea of, of having the LED display and making the laptop part of the environment, um, sort of like an output as well as you know, input. We just tried our best to work with that and make it do interesting things. The existing version of the G14, the Anime LED matrix as it's referred to, it's integrated into the hardware in a kind of rhombus shape. And one thing that we wanted to do, which we thought was interesting, is very in keeping with Acronym's interest in playing with ideas of opacity, transparency, of being able to hide, of being able to control when you make something visible. One of the very simple gestures that we did, it's the only formal change, is that we requested that the perforations be drilled to cover the entire top surface. When those lights come on, they kind of emerge out of the void, rather than clearly being in a kind of like array that's there that can turn on or off. It can be loud, but it can also be quiet. And that simple gesture adds, I think, a lot to the way that the machine even and function kind of emotionally. One of the things that I thought was really kind of a neat perspective, they kind of hid all of the branding. Normally when you open up a laptop, you're greeted with like a logo right here. This is very minimal. They put the model information over here on the side. You don't see it, but if you want to see it, you can. Positioning of the device name on the outside edge of the closed screen part. So this here has the engraving of Zephyrus G14 acronym, Reality Modeling Tool, RMT01. That allowed us to again create the blank screen surround and to have no brand on the inside of the object. So when you're using it, cool. it's just between you and the tool. It reminds me of the very, very, for me, very beautiful typographic design gesture of the branding on camera lenses on like a Zeiss or where you see these engraved around the operational surface of the machine. And at first glance, this just seems kind of nonsensical. There's a bunch of keys that are a bunch of different colors. But guess what? There was actually a lot of thought that went behind this. Color branding is like a huge part of so many experiences today. To come up with a color space that feels like it's not referencing some obvious like thing, like for example, it's all neons, or it's camouflage, or it's this or that. Some of the background behind the color space of this keyboard, uh, there's three keys which are in different colors to the rest of the colored keys, the numbers one, two, three. If you're a gamer, those are kind of action hotkeys, obviously. 
We also wanted to kind of put them as visual function keys in your eye line when you're using the keyboard that are different to pure like Bloomberg terminal like function, function keys like on the F line or something. So that the color space around where you're active is kind of, it's in reference to the hand position of the user. Some of these are like traditional function keys like the shift, mm -hmm. but some of them kind of infiltrate the keyboard and they move onto it. And this is also again that idea of this kind of supporting synthesis where we didn't want it to just be like function keys are important letters are for typing but rather to say something like actually think about like the system and space of this and the harmony between these two experiences this color is called shale this color is kurumatsu which is a japanese pine and this color is arcta they are natural shades they are the kind of shades that you would experience if you're out in a forest or in a wood rather than expectations of highly artificial super brights that you might see on the keyboard but i almost feel there's something kind of calming and zen that this keyboard can kind of become almost like a private garden. Anything else in there? Don't think so. So it's time to turn it on. Hello, friend. Hello, friend. Do not concede the future. Do not accept extinction. The tool is liberated. <gasps> that surprised me. I think once we put that USB stick in, we might have some answers. So this isn't being marketed as a gaming laptop, but it definitely is capable of being perfect for gaming. It has an eight core, 16 thread AMD Ryzen 9 processor, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060, 32 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte solid state drive. It has a 60 Hertz, 14 inch IPS level display that's Pantone validated for color accuracy. It also has adaptive sync variable refresh rate technology for ultra smooth gaming. It's like, what is the actual audience? If it's not gamer specific, but yes, you can game on it. Who really is the audience for this? I think I'm trying to define the current creative uh, by, by looking at an activity that they do or narrowing them down to some sort of a template is already impossible and sort of speaks to our point of like, we don't really know what people are gonna do with it. And, and I think in today's day and age where in the type of multifaceted lives everybody leaves, you may be classified as a graphic designer and one day, and then, but you're gonna make you know a music track the next day. All of these things are so fluid right now. It's really impossible to say. The only common denominator is that you're creative. This is based off a previous release Release, the Zephyrus G14. So basically they were handed this laptop and given the creative freedom to push the limits of what's possible. Now my first thought was how difficult that must have been because trying to design within the hardware constraints that were already set up, that can be really difficult. So they used a lot of different custom materials, etching, machining, and specially developed paints. And they even made an entirely new custom typeface for the keyboard. Did you create this typeface then? Yes, yeah, so there's two primary typefaces on the machine. First, Axis Tempest, Errolson and I built together. It's what I call a technical serif. The conventional aesthetic that people use to suggest something is highly technical is they use a kind of sans serif modernist font. But actually an enormous part of what Acronym does is almost an ancient art. You can be highly futuristic with traditional craft, but the serif and the evidence of what, it, what remains in a serif is the legacy of the hand, of the brush, of the pen, of the moment where the letter was drawn. When it came to designing a typeface for acronym, I said to Aronson, you know, everyone's gonna expect us to do a sans serif. Wouldn't it be beautiful if we could somehow try and create a technical serif that had the level of simplicity and poise and quiet thought behind it that the acronym product does and so that's where we came to axis tempest which is this technical serif that we use on the rmt and then there's another uh, secondary typeface which is a sans serif which is a supporting typeface which also shows that no system should venerate purely like should be purely dogmatic as to say like beauty is the human body because we're building a tool beauty is the marriage of these systems when they fit together properly. No, I think this is so great because I feel like nobody's gonna have, when they open this up, like this whole thought process that you guys have gone through is so intense that I feel like everybody needs to sort of understand. <laughs> Look down at my computer now, I'm like, oh yeah, you're right, it is sans serif, that's weird. But I hope that that will, even if you can't put your finger on it, like the voice of the keyboard will be different to any keyboard that you've experienced before. 
Once I've all started up, I did some of the updates. The first thing that I wanted to check out was the LED lights on the back of this. So there's actually this little interface that you can customize. You can add in all kinds of designs of your own, but they do have some acronym Arrelson ones already on here for you. There's also a text effect. So you can type whatever you want and it'll show up on the front of this laptop. This would have been really amazing when I used to work at coffee shops because people would always come up to me and just ask me what I'm doing. Like, do you not see that I have headphones on? I'm clearly focusing on working and you want to come up and ask me what I'm doing. No. So what I would like to do is put on the front of the laptop, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me, I am busy. Thank you. At least I said thank you. So right now I added in all of the graphics that they have in here and they're all running as a loop. But you can see it, oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Oh wow. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's test out the brain. Oh, look at that. I'm officially logged into the brain. I have an account. I made my first brain. Brain is full of thinking and it hurts. Do they have a demo brain for me to look at? It says that my brain box is empty. <laughs> Should I be offended? <laughs> so obviously this is my first time using the software. I don't actually know how to use it yet. I'll just let Errolson tell you a little bit more about it and how he uses it. It's actually a, a, a visual um, organization tool. Sort of like mind mapping, but it's different because it's actually, it's truly nonlinear. You can map things out visually and associatively in a matrix of data points, which are called thoughts. Aptly. And these thoughts can be attached to any type of, of attachment or data. So it could be referencing a text document or an audio file or a video file or a website. It was uh, conceived and invented by my brother. And it's a piece of software that I've used for my entire professional life, basically. So we spoke to Harlan, my brother, and we're like, yo, can we do a version of the brain specifically for this laptop? And the last thing that is really, really crucial to this video is what is on this drive. And what is this? It's something that we have to solve. And I'm afraid that I'm not gonna be able to solve it in the confines of this video. It, it says it's empty. I don't believe that. They just gave you a flash drive. Really? Did yeah. I just get tricked? Yeah. I'm not mad about it. Um. Okay, so I thought this was gonna be a secret. That doesn't answer the question of what is this? I don't believe that they wouldn't put anything on here. I think there's, there's gotta be something on this. Everything must be questioned. But there's nothing, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's this? <gasps> Do not open. Wait a minute, no, hold on a second. What is this? This says do not open. Am I not actually supposed to open it? What the heck is happening? What is this? Wait, this USB key has been, I can't read it when it's close up. I gotta back up. Wait a minute, so there was something on it. If you're reading this, our efforts to engineer the public. Oh, this, is, oh, this USB key has been formatted to facilitate the machine's connection. What? This was their brain that they created. Oh boy. So it looks like on the USB drive is the brain, but I, I actually went and downloaded it before I put the drive in. So it looks like I had set up my own brain, but this gave me access to theirs. Is that gonna help me solve this puzzle? I'm gonna solve this, but not, not right now. Look, this says do not open. This says delete me. No, I'm opening it. What is all this stuff? What, look, there's stuff. What is all this stuff in here? I must say that I'm confused, impressed, excited, and I definitely need to spend some more time with this computer. But this is really cool. I mean, I absolutely love the fact that they have a very thoughtful design. Everything has a meaning. I mean, even just, oh, these LED lights are so great. Very excited to really just inspect this for some more secrets that I might have missed. think as a gamer and also as a creator what can I do with this thing how can I command it how can it serve me how can I use this to construct or model the reality I'm interested in seeing manifest oh, oh my god 
That hurt. Oh, I've hit myself.